So I don't know about you guys, but in a week and a half, I'm really excited to go home. And after the football game, my parents are going to be here to pick me up, and I'm going to get myself and we're going to go. But I'm figuring that, that you guys are in the same boat as me. The only way we're getting home is because of oil, because most of us are either driving or if we live farther away, we're going to fly. And both of those require oil. So we're dependent on oil to go home. And in fact, 94% of transportation is dependent on oil. And I would make the argument that as a society, we're completely oil dependent because <coughs> so much relies on oil. We don't have mass transportation that can move people or goods without oil. But I'm here to tell you that that's all going to change, and we're moving away from oil into renewable energy. So this, this change in oil and moving away <coughs> from oil goes back to the Green Revolution. And the Green Revolution is the idea of becoming more sustainable. It's raising awareness for the environment and our negative impacts that the burning of fossil fuels such as oil and coal have on the environment. And the overall goal of the revolution is to move and become a society with a small carbon footprint. And the main goal and how we're going to achieve that is by using renewable energy and sustainable energy. <coughs> So we are an oil dependent society. The 1990s and early 2000s, we were the most oil dependent that we ever have been in history. Um, the worst part about this is, as you can see here, 66% of the cost of a gallon of gas comes from crude oil. Crude oil is completely useless. You can't put it in your car or a jet or a plane and power it. The oil owners were just charging that because they know that we need the oil. So we're spending billions and billions of dollars every year just for this crude oil that's useless. And then 15% goes to refining, and that's when we can actually use the oil. As you can see, and the, the another misconception is we get all of our oil from the Middle East, but the fact of the matter is we get over half of our oil from our neighboring countries of Canada, Mexico, and Venezuela. So the idea that Middle <coughs> Eastern, like the corruption in the Middle East is charging this high price for oil is completely false. It's our neighboring <coughs> countries that are doing this to us. In 2009, 37% of our energy came from petroleum. That's the largest percentage of energy that we have used. 8% comes from renewable energy. What exactly is that 8%? That 8% is wind energy and hydropower. You notice I don't have solar power here because it's a little trippy, but I'll get to that later. Wind energy is as seen as the most potential renewable energy source that there is. Hydropower has been around for hundreds of years, and there's not really a lot of technology coming and advancing the, the usage of it, but wind energy has, it's almost like an iPhone. iOS comes out with an update every three months or so, but wind energy is improving. It's the fastest growing, so more updates are constantly coming <coughs> out. Um, the government plays a major role in moving us away from oil and into this sustainable energy. They've done numerous things with the automobile bailout and with subsidizing renewable energy. So subsidizing renewable energy. The main example of this is wind energy. And as you can see, from 2005 to 2009, there was steady growth and a lot of growth in wind energy. But the moment they stopped subsidizing it and providing these tax breaks in 2010, you can see that the, wind, the use of wind energy just dropped off. And that's because there's not this incentive. Because in the short run, oil is much cheaper to use than this sustainable energy and the new energy of, of wind energy. I also mentioned the automobile industry. The government required that $15 billion <coughs> be donated to alternative energy research and renewable energy research over the next seven years when the automobile industry requested the bailout. This energy is going to completely change the way cars work. For example, by 2025, cars are going to be are predicted, predicted to get over 50 plus miles per gallon. So in 10 years, the miles per gallon that your car is get is going to be double what it is now. And that's a huge step forward. And the overall goal of this is to make completely electric cars. And as you can see, the Tesla Model S and then the futuristic model of the Audi R0. The Audi R0 isn't out yet, but the, the Tesla Model S is out yet. And it's, yes, it's extremely expensive, but it can go about 100 miles on a single charge. So the technology is there that we have electric cars. We just have to harness that and make it cheaper until middle class families can afford that. And that's what the goal of the Green Revolution is to do. So what does the future hold for us? Well, the future holds that we're going to use less oil. We're at about we're importing about 19.2 billion barrels of or 19.2 million barrels of oil every single day. That's going to fall about 75% to 5 million barrels. And the overall goal is by 2035 to have 80% of our energy come from renewable energy or low or non-polluting energy. So the government is clearly making this push to move away from oil. We're going to see a lot more wind turbines and solar panels. 
wind turbines have have so much potential. Like I said, they're the fastest growing energy source and they're seen as the most potential. And it's predicted that four times uh, wind farms, offshore wind farms can produce four times the amount of energy that our country needs. So it's just a matter of getting the money out there and harnessing that energy. And it's shown to work on small scales because Denmark has received nearly a quarter of their energy from wind. And yes, Denmark is a much smaller country than the United States, but the fact that they can receive a quarter of their energy from wind just proves that it's definitely possible. And like I said before, solar panels are a little bit tricky because they take up a large amount of space and they're extremely expensive right now. But as more people become aware of this and they become, they become part of the green revolution, they're gonna, there's going to be a further push and the technology for solar panels is going to improve. And that's how they're going to become more, more practical. <coughs> So we just went through one of the biggest changes in our lives coming to college the next three months. And the next 20 years or so is gonna see a lot more changes in where we see our energy. So I challenge you to accept this and embrace this. Don't be the person who's driving the Hummer that is eight miles per gallon in 10 years from now when everyone else is driving a hybrid car and electric car. And in 2035, if the 80% of our energy comes from clean or renewable energy, the world's gonna be a much cleaner place for us to raise our families. Thank you.